Hi guys, we are kinesiology students from Western University. We will host a meet presentation in the next few weeks. This week's topic is bigger muscle doesn't translate to greater strength. My name is Candice and I will introduce the first part of this topic. So firstly, I want to ask a question. Have you ever been at the gym and see all these gigantic guys lifting pretty heavy weight and then some guy have their size comes in and lifts way more and you think how the heck is that possible? Well, today we are here to give you that answer. Bigger isn't always better. When training for certain things, people may think bigger muscles will translate to them being stronger and having more power. While in reality, that does not do much. Size isn't the only thing that matters. There are many factors that play into strength and some are even out of our control, such as muscle insertion, height, fiber type, specific tension, rep ranges, and muscle proportions. Actually, building muscle will probably make you stronger, but it will certainly increase your potential strength. A version of you with more muscle will have the potential to lift more than a version of you with less muscle, though you very well may be able to outlift someone with way more muscle than you have, and you may still be put to shame by someone who's with less muscular than you. So as you mentioned in the previous slide, there are multiple factors that can go into your strength. So those split into two categories, factors that we can't control and factors that we can't. So I'm gonna list you some factors that we can control first. So that includes muscle insertions. So what is that? These insertions are hidden from sight but can produce significant differences in how much weight you can lift. The further away the joint from your tendon inserts, the better your leverage and will be and the more you can lift. As you see in the picture, although there was only a centimeter and a half difference, the individual on the right will be 50% stronger with the exact same build. So next, muscle length. The longer your limbs are, the longer your moment arm will be, which worsens your leverage, giving the shorter guy an advantage. In the image on the screen, you'll see that the man on the right has forearms 20% shorter, which allows him to lift 20% more weight, even though their muscles were exactly the same. This is why shorter individuals are dominating in lighter weight classes, as they can lift more per unit of muscle mass while taller guys dominate heavier classes because when they reach their muscle potential they sometimes lift more last factor is muscle fiber type this is something you're born with and the composition of your muscle fiber affects the level of your strength which unfortunately is determined by your genetics you either have slow or fast twitch fibers so slow switch fibers will help you more with endurance while fast twitch fibers will help you with strength so now some factors that we can't control so first it's muscle proportion the main reason smaller guys are able to lift more is they do a better job at maintaining a, be a balanced muscle proportion. They, might, they may not have as big muscles uh, as bodybuilders, but it doesn't matter because in order to lift heavy weights, you need to bulk all the muscles that will allow you to lift the weight. For example, a bodybuilder may have a large back and big legs, but a smaller guy who did exercises for spinal rectors will be able to deadlift at a heavier weight. Next is muscle pro uh, sp specific tension. Used to measure muscle force. The study found that although bodybuilders had a larger muscle cells compared to the power lifters, the tension was significantly lower, which means although they looked bigger, they couldn't produce as much force, hence that they wouldn't be able to lift as much weight. This ties back to the potential that we're talking about on the first side, as power lifters tend to use more of their potential while bodybuilders just go for the physique. How does training style affect this? Looking at hypertrophy versus strength training, in terms of intensity, bodybuilders will tend to train at low to moderate intensities with high volume resistance training. Power athletes train at high intensity, low volume combined with aerobic training. Hypertrophy training tends to require more frequent workouts with higher volume and shorter rests between sets. And strength training will have lower training volume, but higher intensity with longer rest periods. This will be with a goal to lift heavier weights with fewer reps and sets. Looking at repetition and rest ranges, for hypertrophy training, you want to work between 6 to 12 reps with 3 to 6 sets and 30 seconds to a minute and a half of rest. For strength gains, you want to work below 6 repetitions with 2 to 6 sets and 2 to 5 minutes of rest between. Looking at the types of exercise, strength training will center around compound lifts such as lunges, overhead press, or push-ups. Whereas in contrast, hypertrophy uses both compound and isolation lifts 
such as bicep curls, bench press, or squats, and involves progressive overloading, which is necessary for max muscle fiber recruitment. So, what does all of this mean? Gaining muscle will not determine how much strength you gain. What will determine it will come from your body's composition and training style. When you prioritize strength training, you will build some muscle, but it will not be correlated with how much strength you build. If this were the case, then bodybuilders and powerlifters would look the same and would be able to work out similarly. Your genetic build will play a factor into all of this. Our genetics influence how easily we build muscle, but our workout routine will determine if we are prioritizing strength building along with this muscle build. Thank you for listening to this presentation. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Be sure to check back for more Mythbuster presentations.